Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy. Hey, it's Steve Renazizi with What's the Odds, and uh, it's week three of the NFL. We are here to recap uh, a pretty bad week two in some aspects. <laughs> Gambling-wise, we really fucked up. I really fucked up badly. Uh, Fantasy-wise, I did okay. And our football teams have turned around and, and righted the ship. Sort of. So that's on, a, on that front, we're doing well, right? Do you feel better about it? confident yeah a little uh, more yeah that was a, a pretty solid week yeah um overall i know i lost my bet which i sh i mean I, I i knew it was a long shot but i really felt like i was gonna get the four points and they would stay within three and that was a close game for most of it and then i don't know what, what the jaguars like i didn't really get a chance to zone in on that game are they not playing like productively well on the offensive side what's going on there uh, Lawrence, Lawrence hasn't clicked. I mean, it kind of happened last year too. He kind of started slow and figured stuff out, but um, yeah, yeah, the Chiefs, the Chiefs don't have like a, a great defense. They just played a bad no. game. You know, I mean, Chris Jones makes an impact right away with a sack. So yeah, uh, but and Kelsey being back, getting a touchdown, it all worked out for them. So I didn't cover my end. What did you do, Brent? You guys, you lost too, right? I lost too. I, I. Went away from the Jets. You guys wanted me to go to the Jets. I talked myself out of that one. I went with the Browns, who should have won that game against Pittsburgh. They had three bad plays, and that cost them the game. Um, obviously, losing Nick Chubb in the second quarter sucks royally, because uh, that's yeah. the whole offense. But they, but they still rushed the ball for 140 yards after that. So Yeah, exactly. They, they should have won that game. Cleveland uh, kind of screwed us. Um, but I mean, Lucas got the Bills right. They were yep. dominant, dominant against the Raiders. Uh, they looked better, so hopefully they can carry that into Washington. Well, go ahead, Lucas. I, um, did anybody catch what the announcer said after Travis Kelsey's touchdown against the Jaguars? Mm -mm. Was it? it was were they all good line. references? Were they references to Taylor Swift? Oh yeah, yeah. I heard, I saw Rich Eisen doing that in the beginning. Well, no, when he game. scored, Ian Eagle said, just right in the moment, he said, Travis Kelsey fi finds a blank space for a touchdown. Oh, man. Like, that's, it's it's going to be a fine season. It's going to be. I'm. This is going to get pretty, I think, boring by, you know, season, I mean, week like five or six. It's like, how many different ways are we going to work in? And we don't even know if it's confirmed or not. I want to see guys, some pictures. You guys are haters. And haters are going to hate, hate, hate. I love Speaking it. of Taylor Swift, I almost got scammed again, Brenton. You want to, and you, I know you love you love yourself a good old Steve gets scammed story. <laughs> I'm on Facebook, right, checking in with some old relatives. Yeah, and uh, I see a friend from college. Right, I've got four Taylor Swift tickets for sale. No. Um, I can't. Here are the seats. There's like a map, a diagram on it. So, dude, I was like. And the, the date worked out. It was in Florida. I was like, oh, I'm off that weekend. I'm like, Tracy's been dying. I want to, I'll buy her. The, maybe I'll see if, what, what's what with these tickets and, you know, do a little nice deed. So I click on the link. It was not real, dude. It's not. It's a scam. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a hat. So oh, yesterday was a fucking, I had to try to get out of it. I so hope, I, mean, I don't know what. It, all your passwords, right? Yeah, but like, why would uh, that was such a dirty trap? So you, this such was a, a dirty trap. This was a college friend, a friend from college. You know, okay. like not so, like a person I talk to a lot, but I yeah. just saw the posting. Yeah, and I was like, you know, so I I I wrote on the comments like, hey, I'm super interested. Um, if you're, you know, if this is like something that you're really, you know, it's good to sell. And then I clicked the link that she had there and 
then the my like all these pages started popping up. I was like, oh shit. And then I looked at the comments on Facebook and they were all the comments were like, this is a scam. Don't do it. I've been hacked. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> I didn't look at the comments first. I just wrote one. <laughs> click click first, read second. Always. Oh yeah, so, just uh, just just do what I did and and bite the bullet and go on StubHub and overpay. But she'll love oh, it. No, 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 dude. This was like I thought I was gonna get like because she was like, I'm not trying to kill anyone on the price. I just want to get what I paid for it myself. So I'm like, well, you know, at least I don't know what that is, but let me find out. So that's what you know. There were enough questions that it led me down the rabbit hole. And of course, I'm like, what do I do now, Brenton? How do I trust anyone? I'm turning into my mother. Just throw out everything. Go full Amish. Get rid of all your electronics. Get off the grid. I really don't trust anyone anymore. I don't. I don't know what calls to pick up. I don't know what emails yeah, to answer or that's not answer. That's a thing now that they're saying that you can do with AI is if you if the right hacker calls you and you talk to them long enough, like you just have to say hello and maybe a couple of words like, oh, sorry, you got the wrong number. They can take your voice and use AI technology and then call your relatives and have it saying like, hey, I'm in trouble. I need help. Send me money. Like they're doing that shit now. You basically just oh. need to stop talking to anyone. Don't Do you think Dom Herrera, who just that, called me, by could, have been a bot. could have been a bot. There's no oh, way that was God. Dom. <laughs> For those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, right before we started the podcast, like seconds before, I got a phone call from the fantastic comedian Dom Herrera. But, you know, we were literally going to start. So I said, hold on, should I answer this? And of course, we we're like, yes. So then I think it was just he had called the wrong Steve. We caught up for a second. And that was it. But now putting two and two together based on what happened yesterday and now this robot, because I, I assume if they can make a voice sound like the person, obviously, then they can make the number come up like they're actually calling from their number. Right. Like, Because in my phone, yeah. it said Dom Irera. Like it was his number. So I don't, I mean, oh God, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to post and I'm going to let, you know, I'm going to keep my door open and just hope for the best. You know, I, I go to church once in a while. My brother's a priest. That's all you can do, Steve. This sucks. This world sucks. Um. <laughs> anyway. All right. So we, I get off track there. So let's yeah. get back to fucking week two. Um, so your bills, you were happy with. I got to be honest. I watched the first drive, and I was like, ruh, ruh. Uh, you know, the uh, the Raiders marched down the field. Mm -hmm. um, Garoppolo looked, you know, dipping and dunking and moving around, and, and Jacobs was running around. And they scored that touchdown real quick. I was like, this is bad. Uh, but that was pretty much the, the worst of it. After that, you guys, I mean, sort of – it was pretty much complete domination. So do you feel 100% better, 50% better, 70% better? What do you feel? Yeah, I, I feel 100% better. Uh, Josh oh, 100. Was, yeah, Josh was taking what the defense gave him instead of playing hero ball. He looked really sharp. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I want to pull up his stat line because, you know, our weakness yeah, is it was like, it was run. Like eight, eight yards? He had negative yards deep into that yeah. game. Um, yeah. So they did a really good job containing him. Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams. He's going to get his regardless of his quarterback. Yeah. Josh Jacobs had nine carries for negative two yards. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. That's a complete 180 from the first week, so that's great. Now, I don't know if it's a lot to do with the fact that the Raiders' offensive line didn't look that great, and then also their defensive line, beyond Max Crosby, their defense isn't awesome. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it was, a. it's almost like, I feel like with the giants had going on, it was like, yeah, they had a great comeback against a really bad defense. You put yourself at a 20 point hole against any other team. That's not the giants and the, and the fucking Cardinals. You're going to end up losing that game. Even probably the Houston will hold on to a 20 point lead. So I don't know, like, do you feel, because that's, my point is, like, I am not, a, you know, 100% way back feeling confident about the Giants. It's obviously better than it was week one. But do you feel like you guys, I mean, I, just because the running game seemed to have, you know, been stopped a little bit, I don't know if it's a it's a full fix yet, you know? Mm -hmm. Who you guys have this week? We have Washington. So uh, it's a winnable game. Yeah, and Brian Robinson's running like he, he used to, so. 
Yeah, it's this it's a, a good test. It's a winnable game, though. Um, Sam Howell still fairly untested. Don't really trust him. Our secondary is playing good, so they can shut down McLaurin and and Dotson. And um, if we can contain Brian Robinson, Sam Howell's not going to be able to keep up with Josh if Josh is throwing all over the field. So it was. Um... I, well, you will say this though. You got Eric Bieniemy, who knows how to plan it. You know, he's planned a lot of game plans against the the uh, the Bills and their defense. So yeah, but was it? Really I know he doesn't have the weapons. He doesn't have. Or was it? Oh, well. Was it Andy Reid? We'll see. Pulling, pulling his weight. We will see. But I'm I'm just saying they do uh, that that Denver game. That Commanders Denver game was first of all crazy. That I didn't even think the Commanders. I, I'm like, how is Denver giving everything? Like, what, they got everything they wanted, and they're still giving everything away. It's crazy yeah. to me. Um, the fact that they almost pulled it out at the end was nuts. But the Commanders are scoring points consistently. Two games in a row, they are scoring. They're putting up numbers. Now Denver's defense wasn't that great, but they're still putting up. You know, what are they? Thirty five points a game so far. Something yeah, like that. But, uh, Tennessee's defense is pretty trashy, and Denver's defense is kind of underwhelmed for the first two weeks. So I think the Bills are going to be their first real test. Yeah, but I think that this will be a test for the Bills' defense as well, more, much more yeah. so than the, than the Raiders were, obviously. So yeah, the Raiders are it, a bottom five team. Um, we will see because uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, Josh looked much better but i'm not 100 percent sold in that defense micah Hyde did not i mean he missed a couple tackles it was just weird i don't know i'm not 100 percent sold but then again i'm a giants fan so my god my god yeah first and of you all go from from that emotional roller coaster of a game now into a short week without uh, saquon for possibly a few weeks and you got to go to san francisco yeah, thanks for telling me everything I already knew, Brenton. Yeah, um, so it's uh, it's not going to get one, better. It's not going to get number better. Number one, Saquon has not been ruled out of tomorrow's game yet. That's gamesmanship. Okay. You know he's not playing. I do, but he has not been ruled out. Number two, he might not be. He might not. Be, he might be back in. We got like a little mini buy after tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's you know tomorrow's going to be bad, pretty much. I just hope everyone gets out of that. You know, a moral victory would be staying competitive in the game. I think that would be a great moral victory. But um, it's not to say, like, you know, you stay in the game, you stay competitive without Saquon, and next thing you know, a situation down the road, possibly in the playoffs, playoffs, then you have a little bit of confidence if you want to go into San Francisco and try to win a game. So it's, uh, you know, to get your doors blown off would be bad. I don't want to yeah. see a Cowboys 2.0. So let's try to keep it within the margins of error. So that's all I'm hoping for, a competitive situation. Um, a win would be unbelievable uh, and and probably far-fetched. But I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that it's – because, number one – well, let's go back to the fucking Cardinals game. But the first half, I get off the plane. I, I literally get in my car, put on the radio, first play of the game, here we go. And, you know, it's the the Cardinals are marching down the field. I go, this is happening all over again. They score first. We can't put a point up. It's three and out. And I'm like, I, 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 and 20 points later, I pull into my driveway. And I'm like, this is unfathomable to me. I take a shower at halftime. I sit down. And I'm like, here we go. Let's watch the second half. And it was almost like two completely different teams. Like what I had heard on the radio through the mumbled, uh, um, uh, stammering Carl Banks, it was completely different than what I was seeing on the field. Completely different. It was like two different teams. So for the it was the first time I actually got to sit and watch the Giants on television. You know, I was there obviously opening day, and that was a disaster. And then driving the first half, so I, I watching the game. I could see. I'm like, this. How how is this team the same team that played in the first quarter and the first half? Completely night and day. Now, was that because the you know we it, it wasn't everything was better. You know the got the Cardinals handed us. Our offensive line was so bad, false starting. The only th- they, they false started two or three times in a row. In a row, I mean Evan Neal had so many penalties. I was like, this guy has to take a step forward. He's doing exactly what Andrew Thomas did, 
drafted him decent first year, really bad second year, and then they got to turn him around. They got to get him on the right because between, you know, he's killing us on penalties, holding penalties when we score touchdowns. It's bad. So, but everybody, you know, Daniel Jones looked like, I called him Vanilla Vic, dude. The kid, the kid was looking, option, throw, nope, going to tuck it and go. And I'm not talking go like try to get a couple yards, make something out. Like he's going to score every time he goes to run. And he's got incredible – he's got incredible ability to be able to take hits, like big-time hits, yeah. and just bounce back up, dude. He's like a deer. A deer that's just boom, right back up. So I don't know if that's what Gettleman saw in him, his ability just to be able to take punishment – and just keep, you know, like almost Tim Tebow-ish, where it's like, I'm just going to fucking run right at you, and you're going to have to stop me. There's no going out of bounds. There's no like, you know, I mean, he slides when he has to, but when he's already gotten enough, if he thinks he get a little bit more, he's going to take a hit. And that's what he did, he, you know. And obviously, Jalen Hyatt being a threat downfield was awesome. Two catches for 89, our leading receiver for 89 yards. So, yeah. We have the ability to move the ball. Thank God. I was like, we're not going to score a point the whole fucking season. (laughs) We're not going to score one goddamn point. And then when we got to 14, I go, we're going to be able to do this. As long as our defense can stop them one time. And then Barkley stretched for that 21, the, the, the third touchdown. And then when we got to three and out the next time, I was like, here we go. We're going to win this game. But I was still not happy. Because I feel like we shouldn't even have been in the situation we were fucking in. No. And so coming out of it, I'm like, this tastes okay, but it's really not – I don't know how much we're going to gain from it, especially going into what we're going into on Thursday. You know, we're not going to be handed a goddamn thing on Thursday. Nothing. And and Daniel Jones will get all you can eat with the contact that he's going to try to draw. So um, it's not going to be a a probably pretty thing on Thursday. I I, I almost – I've looked at the number. What was the number for the for the Giants? What are the Giants giving? Uh, they're giving I ten, hate. getting ten, 10 points. Yeah, right now on bet DSI, and that's probably because Saquon is officially yeah. not ruled out. But once he's ruled out, I'm sure that's going to shift even worse. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ten is like a massive number. I I feel like the like I want to say the Giants should be able to keep it within ten. But it's going to be we tough. also suck on defense, too. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I see a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau and a guy like Micah Parsons, and I'm like, wait, that was supposed to be our Micah Parsons. And this guy has zero effect on the game so far. Yeah. Another guy that needs to take a step forward. So we have some people that are in the, you know, the playmaking uh, uh, slots, and they've got to start making some plays, especially – when you got a guy like you know Saquon Barkley going down, so I want to say they should be able to keep it within ten. I really do. They should be able to keep it within ten, but who knows? We'll and see. And that would that would make um, you feel good about this team? Uh, yeah. I mean, look, if they lost by a three point, if they played well to the point where you know, like it's within a score or ten, ten points, that's pretty good, dude. On on the road, three, you know, four and a half days after you haven't been home, you know, you've been on the road for what a week now already. So it's like, you know, it's it's a back to back road games. That's a that's a decent, that's an accomplishment. So yeah, I would feel good about that. Now, if the fucking Niners are playing like the Cardinals did last week, and we still can't beat them, then I, you know, I'm like, then you know, it is what it is. But if they're playing decent and we can hang with them, then I'm all right. So. But we'll see what happens. Um, that's not my game, so I don't want to get to it yet. So uh, I guess we should get uh, – another official thing I just saw as I popped up on my screen was um, the uh, the Browns have signed Nick Chubb – I mean, um, Green, Green Hunt, Hunt to a uh, one-year $4 million contract. I'm sure there's some, some incentives involved in that, um, which, you know, I mean, it's like the likeliest situation. They were – you know, one and two for the last couple of years. And, you know, it was, uh, that was, I, I, I did not watch the game live. I watched, I mean, the first quarter or two, 
and then Tracy and I are into the Americans, so we started doing that. And then I was like, when I came out and I just heard about it, I just I, I was like, oh. When they were like, it's one of those ones that they didn't show on the replay. It wouldn't show on the replay. I don't like that stuff. I don't really like, like, I don't, like, I would never go watch the Joe Fies. I've seen the Joe Fiesman hit. I've seen, like, the Willis McGay he won. You know, even the Dak Prescott one a couple years ago where the Giants got him from behind and his ankle went one way. You know, the Alex Smith one. I can't, I'm not into, it's not my thing. So, I haven't seen it. I have I'm a huge sure terrible. Steve. Oh, you, don't, Christ, you don't yeah. need to show it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, like he had this same injury in college in 2015, and it was the same way, the exact same way. Someone someone oh. made a side by side comparison, and the leg is basically you know how your your leg is like like this. Just pretend that yeah. it's the exact opposite direction. I know. Oh my god! So you, you don't need to see it. It's I don't want him to throw up on the podcast. Steve's got a weak stomach. It's, uh, Are you going to show the picture? I, I, I'm watching it right now, actually, on my end. And it looks like a cat. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty routine play. Yeah. It's first and goal. Oh, I mean, it, oh man. It happened, it happened so quick, too. I'm Watching it live, I didn't notice his leg bend, and then he just, like, guys were going to help him up, and he's just like, nope. Yeah, and initially he he gets up, and so he's just on his ass, but his back's up, and then he and it looks like twenty seconds in, he keels over. Yeah, it oh. it sucks because uh, he's and now the Steelers are praying. Yeah, he's one of the most fun running backs to watch in football, and I don't know if you realize this, but he has the NFL record uh, for yards per carry. I don't know what the yeah minimum five point three. Is. Yeah, he. Legitimately, it's him and Bo Jackson and another guy. Yeah, if he was I mean, on like, any other team but the Browns, he'd be like the guy that everyone talks about every week as a superstar. But because he's in Cleveland, he's just kind of been buried on awful teams. But he's been like this dude, bright spot. How and, crazy is it that these? I mean, it's almost like they're proving the owners' points, where it's like these these positions are. You know, I mean, I'm not saying Saquon, but I'm saying you know. Nick Chubb and uh, uh, J.K. Dobbins. It's like these are the the worst injuries you've heard about so far this season. Have all been running backs. Yeah. You know, week one we had a, you know a, a running back that most people drafted in, in the top five rounds of their fantasy. J.K. Dobbins go out, and week two you had you know arguably someone's top five pick. If you had a top five pick, you probably had Nick Chubb on your team. You know, so it's crazy, and but it's the truth. And you know, you put Kareem in, like I said, they they rushed for 140 yards after. So it's a scheme thing, it's a blocking situation, and you know the talent is obviously you know there's no other Nick Chubbs, there's no other Derrick Henrys, there's no other Jonathan Taylors, but the you know the guys that are right behind them are not that far behind him anymore. You know, when you put him in the right scheme, in the right position, and you run the ball, you're not that far behind. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get, you know, although, you know, Kareem Hunt is obviously not, you know, there's a reason why he lost his job, but I think he'll, you know, he's going to still probably get a thousand yards if he becomes. No, no, I don't think he's going to. He's got got 15 games. They needed the depth and, because they they had nobody, they only had uh, Ford and Pierre Strong behind. I mean, they have one more guy in the practice squad, but they have no running back depth. So they let Kareem walk because they were saying last year there were rumors that uh, oh he's lost his speed, he doesn't have it anymore. They were playing him less and less as the season dragged on, and they let him go. And there's a reason they didn't re-sign him even when his price went way down. So they got him back just because he knows the offense. It's going to be. Ford and Pierre Strong until one of them gets hurt. And then Hunt will have maybe an opportunity, but he's probably not in shape. And, uh, you know, it's going to take several weeks. He's more of like just, uh, hey, we're going to stash him. And if something goes really bad, at least we have a body to put out there. Find me the over under on Kareem Hunt's rushing yards this weekend. I, I'll guarantee, I'll, I mean, well, there's no, the he's not, right. there's no way he's playing this weekend. Find me the number, Brenton. Okay. Um, yeah. But you know what? You know what the Browns should do. Why the, Jonathan what, Taylor? Taylor? Yeah, absolutely. They should go trade for Jonathan Taylor. 
okay, why would you trade for Jonathan Taylor in the sense you have to give up something? You're going to have to sign. He wants a contract. He's not going to play for the rest of the year. I get it. I get it. But you need to win now. You're, you have your Super Bowl window. Your defense is not going to be intact in a couple of years. You have a good defense. You have the most dominant rushing game in football. But you need you need a guy. Ford is is serviceable, but he's not that guy. Go and get Jonathan Taylor and keep yourself in the playoff hunt. I th- I think it's a different story than than the Jets needing a different quarterback. That was the, the no, Aaron Rodgers was more important the to Jets the Jets need. than Nick Chubb was to the to the to the Browns. No, that situation I I slightly disagree. I think what we saw was Aaron Rodgers um, is not on the sideline. He's not at the, he's not in the huddle. He's not changing Nathaniel Hackett's plays. And what we saw was an entire game of Nathaniel Hackett making horrible decisions where let's give Brees Hall the ball four times. Yeah, I, I got opinions on that, but let's stay on the Nick okay. Chubb thing for one second. Just so, yeah, I think the, going... I don't think the Browns should give up if they can go and get somebody that's maybe not Jonathan Taylor, but who's somebody that's a tier below Jonathan Taylor. That is, is... I think they got him. Kareem Hunt is probably the tier that's free available. They let him go wise. for a reason. I'm not talking about free um, agents. I'm talking about making an aggressive trade to keep their playoff hopes alive and to keep that team, you know, they're they're Super Bowl contenders. If they have Nick Chubb, if they if they go and get Jonathan Taylor, they go well, right back into that conversation. It could be interesting if the fact that the, you know, Jets fall out of contention and realize they're not going to win a Super Bowl if they gave away either, you know, uh, um, you know, one of their running backs, you know, a Bryce Hall or a Dalvin Cook or a they, they uh, could get Dalvin Cook on the cheap. You know, so it's a situation where you know they can probably find someone, but I just think it's a, they are going to be scheme run it. We have a, a stable of guys that are going to go and 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 that actually is the point I want to make about the Jets. It's that the Jets, Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, when you got Micah Parsons coming at you, you can't you can't expect a. a a quarterback who is really not at his full like ability. Like he's not a very, he's not confident. He's not what you want him to be yet. So why would you put him out here and try to make reads when you've got fucking LT part two coming at him? Yeah. You know what I would love to see? They, They paid Aaron Rodgers all this money, right? So he should do what he did in green Bay Put on the headset. Hackett's going to call in the play. And then Aaron Rodgers is going to go, no, Zach, don't do that stupid bullshit. Do this. And he should just kind of run that offense. Well, tell, I think he's Tell Zach it. what to change the play to and what the read is. And I think that would make that team a lot more successful. Hackett I is don't think he, You won't see shit. him on the sidelines till week six or seven. But that's what they need. They need Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Same, no, same yeah. as he did in Green Bay. Changing every play. No, Hackett. he uh, he Hackett's would be useful awful. on the sideline. I I don't I mean I don't know what they're they uh, when he got completely out coached by Mike McCarthy, completely yeah. out coached. Mike McCarthy drew up a game plan that was like perfect. I'm gonna send my receivers deep, and if I don't got a shot, I'm gonna dink and dunk over the middle for eight, nine, ten yards, and then I'm gonna run the ball forty fucking times. Once I have a lead, because I know that you, I put 10, 15 points on the board and number 11 is going to choke the fucking life out of you guys. You're done. Mm-hmm. It's over. There, that defense is, oh God. The whole day I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I remember when the fucking Cowboys traded down because they knew they could get Micah Parsons the spot before us because we would have taken him. And whoever they were in between needed quarterbacks. And when they took Micah Parsons, I was like, fuck, because the Giants have said they were, he was number one on their draft board. I think Micah Parsons was the Trevor Lawrence here, right? Am I right about that? I'm looking right now. Because I think Micah was like the 10th pick around that area. Yeah, 10th or 11th or something like that. He had character issues, which is such a broad term, but we were yeah, talking State. about it at the time. I'm yeah, sick he's of the character number 12. issue stuff. If he didn't murder somebody, yeah, you know, I so love how take him. Pat Penn State, he had character issues. Meanwhile, you know, Sandusky's fucking kids for yeah. 40 years, but... Oh, Steve, you're going to hate this. What? 
You're going to absolutely hate this. Okay, the Giants so... picked before the Cowboys? Is that what you're going to No, no, us? they didn't pick before. They couldn't get their hands on Parsons. Well, no, 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 no I, I think he could have, actually. You had the 11th pick. You traded it to the Bears so they could get Justin Fields because I remember Fields. they won the Leap Frog the Vikings. And then the next pick was Parsons, so you could have had Parsons. Yes. Instead, you traded down to take to 20 to take – can you guess? Yeah. Because right. it could – Kadarius yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yes. And then <laughs> – but the next year, though, we got another one first-round pick. That's how last year we had – Okay. We had Evan, we got Evan Neal and Thibodeau. But that's what I'm saying, though. If Thibodeau turned out to be who we uh, – you know, a Micah Parsons light, then I would have a less of a problem with it. Because then we got, you know, an offensive lineman, which we needed, Kadarius Tony, which turned into another fucking thing, which is, uh, turned into Darren Waller. But – we would have had the guy that, you know, our Mark, Micah Parsons light for. But we don't have that. So that's, like, fucking terrible to me. Because this guy, I mean, we talked about it. He wanted to win the MVP. He's, he might win the MVP. His odds went from 100 to 1 on Monday to 35 to 1 today. That's how, they, that's how it's trending for him. Now, look, it's going to, you know, obviously health and everything else that goes with it. The team could take a turn. But when you watch them play... It was, I mean, the Giants look terrible and the Jets look terrible. So, again, we got to watch them play. I don't know who they play this. Oh, they play the Cardinals. My God. My God. Yeah, that's the lock of Michael locks. Parsons could have six or seven sacks this week. Six or seven sacks. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of which, the, the value of future first-round picks, right now Chicago and Arizona could have four of the first five picks. Because Chicago of the way that in Arizona could have four of the first five picks in the NFL draft. Because Chicago owns Carolinas and they suck. And then Arizona owns Houston's and they also suck. Wouldn't that be crazy? I, mean, I, I yeah. it's all everyone's it's Caleb's I mean uh, uh the kid from UCLA, John, Caleb Williams. Uh, Caleb Williams. And uh, and Ohio State, the receiver, uh, what's his name? Junior. Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah, are like the two co- – so, I mean, there's a but chance they, that one yeah, of those that, teams uh, both those guys. Yeah, tight end as well. Uh, what's his name? From, where does he play, Georgia? I don't know. But he, I just heard – like the greatest sport, tight end right? prospect. You have a couple more quarterbacks he, that are insane. It's going to be a really good draft class. So you want to be – if your team's not good, you want to lose every game. So maybe if you're the Giants, you're like, let's just fucking tank and get something. I mean, we're not going to make the playoffs, so a top If you 10 don't think you're going to make the playoffs, get a top 10 pick. It's going to be a real fucking struggle, dude. It's an up – I mean, our whole division is we'll, 2-0. We'll beat the Commanders for you this weekend. Yeah, we'll beat the Commanders. Well, yeah, you got to get them to 1-2-1. and to two and one. We got to win, which is not going to happen. You know, it's going to be real fucking tough, bro. Take a miracle. You think the Cowboys are losing this weekend? Not a fucking chance. What's not, the spread not, on that? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's 12 right now. Yeah, 12, 12 and a half. I'm taking uh, – give me the fucking over and the Cowboys. <laughs> well, you want the over? Well, I don't know. You, you think Arizona is going to score? What's the over under? It's 43, it's 40. 43 and a half. Uh, I'm like, the Cowboys could score 40 on their own. So, well, we know that. Yeah, I think it could be like a 30 to 10 game. They, they could do, oh, fuck you, dude. We, we know they could shot. score 40. We are aware. Fuck you, bro. Um, <laughs> they're averaging 35 points a game. They scored um, 40 and 30. I'm like, but that's fucking not hell, the uh, that's not the biggest spread on the weekend. Uh, is there one? Who's the biggest one? Uh, Kansas City hosting Chicago's a little bit higher. I, mean, I well, out of all three of those, I'd say can't, Chicago's got the biggest chance of covering that spread because they just played t- horribly, and you know there's a they have the ability to play pretty well. The Cardinals played their best football in the first half. Last week, and then we saw the real Cardinals in the second half. And they no longer uh, have Buda Baker. He's on the IR. Really? What happened to him? 
Uh, he probably was just like, fuck this. I'm not, I'm not killing myself playing with these fucking idiots all uh, day long. I think long. it was a chest injury, maybe. Oh, that sucks. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the Cardinals look terrible. The Bears look pretty bad so far. I mean, I thought Justin Field. I, I'm like, I, I got Justin Field starting and Kirk Cousins on my bench two weeks in a row. This has got a flip flop. Kirk Cousins has got averaging thirty points. You're not going to bench. <laughs> No, you know what? Please go ahead and start Kirk Cousins. Why? Why would you ever bench Hertz? No, not Hertz. Fields. Who'd you say? Fields? Oh, sorry. Fields, motherfucker. I'm looking at Buda Baker. I'm I'm, I'm hearing the wrong name. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, flip that shit. Okay, uh, hang on. Let's let's look at uh, Kirk Cousins is going up against the Chargers. Yeah. Their defense is terrible, dude. Steve, shit, and that's a 54 over under. You might want to actually flip flop them. Yeah. For this week. He put up 30 points in a loss the other day. Yeah. Uh, by the way, touchdowns. Daniel Jones was uh, the quarterback for the Millie Maker this week. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, and it was all in one half. He went, oh my the, God. He went the fuck off. He had like 30 some points. Did pretty well for me in the listener league after uh, obviously not doing so well the first week, but he had a crazy fantasy game. Did he? Uh, did, how'd you do in the Millie Maker? Uh, I make four lineups every week. Two of them cash. Two of them did not. But it was nothing to write home about. I think I lost ten dollars overall. Got it. Um, so the millionaire had a had a. I mean, you got to think about like he probably was in. Nowhere near first. No hours near first. before. No, won. no, 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 no. Nowhere near first. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. Um. Well, I would say Dak Prescott should be a million maker fucking quarterback this week because he may throw for five or six touchdowns against the way they, you know, their offense is looking. And that, you know, the defense, even if they, the worst thing they do, the only way they fuck the offense is that they 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 scoop and score. Do you know how many more offensive points they would have if they just got the turnover and, and gave them the ball back at the 20 on the, to the offense? But they're, they're not only they're, – they're grabbing it and scoring. Yeah. I mean, Micah Parsons is like – they say like, oh, well, you know, instead of him sacking the quarterback, we'll just run it at him. Now he's like, great, I'll just rip the fucking ball right out of your running back's hand and take it the other way. Like that's what he's doing now. It's crazy. So it's, uh, it's uh, going to be a long, long day for fucking – and uh, I, I do not think that the that the uh, that the Cardinals. That's my game. I think I'm taking the Cowboys and give me and you know, you fuck the points. They're going to score. They're going to beat them by twenty. Yeah. Um, um, we did see though that uh, there were question marks about the Cowboys' offense, and they didn't have to do much against the Giants. They looked really good against the Jets. CD Lamb completely tore up the zone coverage and. And Pollard ran really well. Dak looked good. So uh, I hate to say it, but they might actually have a, a pretty solid team this year. Um, how yeah, they do? How I'm uh, looking forward to the Eagles game. How well that's going to be? Then we start to see what what team shows up. I can't. Well, that's they also be play uh, San Francisco San Fran. five. Yeah, that's Sunday okay. night too. Mm-hmm. Um. What, how much do you think they're panicking in in Denver that they've spent all this money? And I don't think they're panicking in? yet. I don't think they're panicking because the the issue has been they come out in the first half and they do whatever they want and they just need to sustain that. They haven't been sustaining. The defense is not quite where it needs to be, but they have good pieces. Um, I think Javante Williams is still kind of getting back into game shape. You finally got Jerry Judy back. Russell Wilson has looked pretty damn good so i don't think you're panicking yet you obviously don't want to be zero and two but those were two games that they could have and maybe should have won um so if they go zero and three zero and four then i think we revisit this conversation but they they've looked pretty good uh but they do have to play the charges are a bigger disappointment to me than they are uh so I, they still have so there. uh cassie follows this account that um they get like anonymous like tips like oh this celebrity couple's dating this is happening this scandal's unfolding and one of the things that uh has been sent and usually 
the accounts like it's it's not TMZ where it's all speculation. It's like oh they they fucking know and they get it right like ninety nine point nine percent of the time. There are rumors that uh, there's going to be a coaching change in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Um, so if Brandon Staley loses this week, we could see it as early as week three. He's out. Who, who loses their job first, Brandon Staley or Matt Canada? Um, I would say Brandon Staley because uh, well, we're, we're Tomlin home fans. Tomlin it Matt doesn't fire doesn't, Matt Canada. It doesn't matter. Tomlin is an old school guy, and he's not going to make a change. He's going to move like a, a glacier to make a change with his staff mid season because he knows how much that could affect the flow of his team and everything. But, but Staley has way too much talent on his team. You know, he blows the playoff game last year, the year before that he takes a timeout and this is the playoffs because he makes a horrible decision. He doesn't manage games. Well, he's wasting Justin Herbert. Like I could see that happening as, as early as this week, if they lose, I mean, they're playing Minnesota. Oh, and two Minnesota. If they lose that game, He's probably not getting back on the plane to fly back to LA. I mean, Kellen Moore hasn't done him any favors over there. Uh, uh, I disagree. I, you know, I I think you know Herbert's been airing the ball out. He's, yeah, but you know, what, like that when they when it got close, it's like they had a three and out, three passes, pass, 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 no time off the clock. Right, they give the ball back, and next thing you know, it's like you know a pass, a run, or a pass, right? They they you know, and then they go down and score. So it's like, it's a, you know, they, they don't, I, I just, I tell him more to me is like, when you look at the difference and it's fucking horrible to say, but you know, with, with Mike McCarthy calling plays in Dallas, it's like, it's a more even, evenly like scheme. It's, it's even handed. It's, you know, you're not relying on drop back Dak and, and make a play out of something. And I think that's probably what's happening to Kellen Moore right now. Yeah, I mean, to uh, but, Justin Herbert is that, but in the know, situation, drops back. in the situation that you're talking about though, Kellen Moore didn't have Austin Eckler and Joshua Kelly was getting bottled up all day. So what was working was Herbert throwing the football. So I get what you're saying and you're not wrong, but I think situationally he was just trying to get a first down and end the game. Um, and again, it it falls under Staley. I don't think Kellen Moore is the problem. I think Kellen Moore will elevate Justin Herbert this year, uh, but Brandon Staley is going to keep them from winning football games because he just he isn't a good coach. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, it's they've had talent there. The defense is been great. Again, they spent a ton of money on the defense, but it's not really showing up that every week. And so it's like, what a disappointment. Yeah. Because you have, you're, I mean, you're wasting this kid that you have this unbelievable talent at quarterback and some decent weapons around them, and it's just it's going by the wayside. So, um, any other big surprises or things you wanted to cover from last week before we get to our picks? Um, Who signed here? I just saw a thing. Hold on. I mean, can we stop fighting in the stands? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, dude, that's a big problem. What is going on? People are on hinge, man. And they're not even good games. They're like, one of them was like a fucking I don't know, the Commander's Broncos game, right? I don't well, know. I mean, th th those were two teams <laughs> that aren't playing at a level that you'd hope they would. But that was one of the most exciting games of the week. Let's be honest. Yeah. If, if you watch it, because yeah, yeah. I, I didn't watch the start of it. I flipped over to it. I'll watch it today. But the ending of that game was insane. I mean, the guy got killed in uh in New England. The guy's yeah. dead. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's uh I don't know. I mean Yeah, we're go we're going to the Chargers game, Lucas and I on the the twenty third of December when Buffalo comes to town and Yeah. Look, I I don't know, man. I kinda at this point I prefer just staying home and watching games on TV, especially in LA. Like I'm not someone who's drinking a ton and then and being loud and obnoxious cheering for the road team but i've had people that have like shoved me and and we cassie and i were at a mm -hmm. hockey game where we were getting screamed at we weren't celebrating at all against the kings and these four younger dudes sitting like three rows behind us were screaming like fuck you at us literally for three periods of hockey like it sucks so uh, I, yeah 
And NFL fans this season, they, they were fighting in the preseason. There was a big melee at a Broncos 49ers preseason game. Yeah. Fucking preseason. Yeah, the NFL games are tough because you have so many. I mean, there's only eight home games. Uh, so, you know, everybody wants to go support their team. And then out the cha- you know, out, out of those eight, you're going to have a decent amount of fans, especially in transient cities like Los Angeles from other places that come to support their team. And it's always going to be a mix. You probably add more security and this and that, I guess. But, you know, I feel like every time I watch one of these videos, the security guard's coming at the end, but there's like 15 people throwing fucking, you know, bows and shit and fists. And and it's like, so what do you get to, you know, like how is one lady with a yellow security jacket going to break all this shit up? Yeah, that and the other thing, put your fucking phone down and, and... You know, if you're capable of stepping in and kind of helping to break it up and alleviate it, you don't need to record it. Just my friends, somebody guys. needs to document it for us. Yeah, I mean, how else would we know if a fight ha- if a fight happens in the woods and no one's there to record it? Did it really happen, Steve? If you Question. and I are at a game, you hand me your phone, I'll record it. You go step in and stop it. That's how it should. Oh, be. teamwork. Turn turn to the smaller person next to you. We're good at holding things steady. And and putting it in perfect frame, and you go stop the fight. Some people don't want to get involved, you know. Like, say you're wearing your fucking Bills jersey, you're just walking by, and you see a fight, you go to get, you go to just break it up. Now people think that you're, you know, in it too. It's like I, you know, yeah. I, I. It's it's not. You're right. That's that's when the NFL will take a uh, when there's some sort of uh, decline in in attendance, but there won't be. There won't be There's but, someone else. I mean, maybe maybe they're not going to sell booze past halftime. It might get to the point oh. where they're like, we can't sell booze past this point because you guys can't stop fighting each other. Because it's I guess. probably I mean, the majority I'm, is, is there alcohol no, is there related. No cut? I mean, is I told no, you, you know what? Actually, Thanksgiving game I, last year, there was a fight literally the row behind us. They at get, the draft every game. Week, they stopped serving at like uh, I think it was like a two minute warning <laughs> at the fourth quarter. No, uh, yeah. I don't remember where I was, but yeah, they uh, uh, I guess there has to be, yeah, there should be a you know, but think about it. I mean, people, unlike every other sport, people usually tailgate or you know, are yeah. drinking for hours and hours before they even get into that fucking place. Yeah. So that might not if they said you couldn't do that anymore. Like, let's say there was a murder, because well, you can't well, even there, like there penalize. Was, there was this last week. There was a. Murder. Oh, I know, but it's like, you can't even penalize like because it was a home team guy that got killed. So, like, how do you penalize the fucking Dolphins for a fan of theirs yeah. having done something like that? You know, like, what do you tell the Dolphins fans? They can't tailgate because one of your asshole fans killed someone. Or fucking, it's going to turn into a war. Then, I think um, you take a draft pick away from him, Steve. I started docking draft picks. He's yeah, <laughs> they're used to that. Every, how much? What, what is a murder? Is a first round? I mean, I think it's what, a third rounder because you know, like you said, it's an away game. I mean, a, a negotiation mass murder that's this. like a first round pick. Yeah, you so kill multiple said, people. What if I killed a kid? Oh, that's a first round pick for sure. That's two first round picks. Sounds like a what conditional if, first round pick. What if I punched the dad, but by accident I connected with the kid and and, and killed the kid? That's like second round manslaughter. All right. These are all I can't wait to be part of the negotiating crew that has to because that's what it's good. I mean, I don't I, other than that, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, imagine if you punish fans Stop for football? their or punish teams for their fans' behavior. That'd actually be kind of cool. Well, they do that technically. The Bills almost got uh what was it, delay game or unsportsmanlike for throwing the snowballs in the playoffs last year? Like they <laughs> do have penalty flags for fan behavior. But then you'll have some Antifa folks that will put on, like, I'll go to a Jets game or I'll go to a Giants game wearing a Jets jersey, start some shit to fucking have the, you know, this the system's got flaws, bro. We yeah. got to work out the kinks in this thing. I mean, I think you it can starts. You people going rogue. It starts with Yeah, the they NFL can system. dig through your history, though, and know who you like. I think. You've been the same fan of the same team since you were a kid. They know. Your Honor, this these photos have been photoshopped. Uh, this man <laughs> has been a Giants fan his entire life. I, I mean, look, I, I don't – yeah, I, there, I'm i sure that the Dolphins have put out a statement, we don't condone anything like this, and this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. But 
you know, un- until it hits their pocketbooks, their draft picks or whatever, not- nothing's going to happen. I don't even know how to do that. I mean, the only way to do it is to find the, the actual stadium that it happened. You know, I mean, but then again, it's like it was a it was a fan from another team, so I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. all I know is that I went to the the Red Sox Yankees one game playoff. You got a one game playoff. Stakes couldn't be higher. Ari and I went. We're in our our Yankee stuff. We w- walked to the game. You know, and I wasn't comfortable one hundred percent. But the worst is they they called us a fag. That was it. And they were like, "Get out of here!" And I was like, "That's it. That's awesome. I can take that all day long." We held hands. We leaned into it, so it was fine. But don't punch someone, you know. But it happens. I've seen it happen. Yeah, I've I've been shouldered at a few games. I've been shoved and obviously been screamed at. And I'm I mean, pretty re- pretty reserved at these games. Um, it's it sucks because obviously I'm not going to fight fight back. I'm not going to do anything. I weigh 130 pounds. Oh, I would love that. I mean, I would never want to see you get hurt, but I would love to. See <laughs> I would some, get hurt. Some, some, I get some footage bad. of you climbing the back of some fucking Chargers fan <laughs> trying to get his back and no, no. choke him out. <laughs> That's why I'm going with Lucas. Lucas is going to protect me. Yeah. I'll, I'll start the fight, and then I'll be the, the little girlfriend that hides behind him. Go get him. And Lucas will just <laughs> hulk his way through a row of fans. you got to go with That's O'Neal. He for. brings a knife. He, I don't know how he gets it in, but he brings How does he get a knife in? <laughs> I don't know, dude. That's the other problem. Is that I have I have <laughs> friends that I know have gotten knives through security. So I'm like, oh. this is a fucking problem. Yeah, I always um, bring the knife to the stadium, but I always remember I have it on me and throw it away. I'm like, God damn it, that's a thirty dollar knife. Oh, <laughs> fucking got a knife collection at Dodger Stadium. I lost so I'm many. Thinking. Yeah, I lost so many knives in stadiums. That's where all these fucking savages they just go into the bushes and pick up a fucking switchblade <laughs> and start fighting in the parking lot. <laughs> um. Uh, one more thing we should we should touch on because it was very interesting and obviously the uh, the betting conspiracy world is having a field day. Oh, McVay, I think they know what you're talking about. Yeah, Sean McVay kicking a last second field goal for no reason of, other than to cover the spread. <laughs> um, I don't under did what I understood. He was like, oh, I I guess I pissed people off in Vegas. What was his re- – did they ever – was he ever asked what was the reasoning for kicking the field goal? I don't know if he was asked that, Lucas, if you want to look it up. But look it. the argument for him is that in the, the case of a tiebreaker situation, if you're head-to-head, you're tied, your win percentage is tied, then the third thing would be your total points scored for the season. So he was kicking the field goal to up his total points because I don't think there was any time left for him to try an onside kick. And if there was, the time would have run off the clock just from kicking it. Like, it was completely pointless. But, but, but why not a Hail Mary? That, his not? argument is that he he was trying to... The percentage is that you would probably make a field goal rather than yeah. you know, the percentage of getting a Hail Mary. Yeah. Um, it really makes yeah. sense. I mean, that's the, literally the only thing that could possibly be an excuse I I mean I I've never seen any other coaches do that. That's right. No, I, I don't know. Um, it did fuck a lot of people though. It did fuck a lot of people. Um, and I don't. I mean I I don't know. I really like. It is pretty suspicious though. It is suspicious that it's that was sketchy. a spread. Yeah. So, it, you know, you do have built-in excuses for, like, oh, you know, it's a it's a tiebreaker thing. If they should really move that tiebreaker way, way down and and, if, if, and remove it at all. Like, points four? Like, how many times? Yeah, but like, the odds of it have – I don't know if it's ever gotten to that point because it's, it's yeah. head-to-head win versus loss, and then it is win percentage for the season. Like, it's never gotten past that. It's the first time I've ever heard a coach use that as, a, as an excuse yeah. for anything at the end of the game. Like, he got a text at halftime, hey, buddy, I got $20 million on you to cover, so hook it up or we're going to have problems, and he hooked it up. Look, dude, I know people are going to say that, and that sounds a little wild, but if that's even remotely true, oh, boy. it's it's This could end all of it. Like, yeah. this could end it all. 
if shit like this is going on, it'll end it all. Like they'll stop doing everything. They'll stop gamb. They'll stop betting on partnerships. All that. They do not want any of that. So trust me, there'll be no investigation into this at all. Nobody wants anything uncovered. There might be a quiet investigation. You're going to have to really do some deep, deep digging to find out. Unless like, you know, you like you said, like they ping his fucking phone records. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, it's crazy though, but I would be pissed if that was us and we lost money on that. Yeah. But fortunately, we uh, only lost money on other games. On our own brain, <laughs> instead of uh, relying on somebody else's. Um, all right, look, I'm telling you right now, the, uh, the, the, the I hate to do this. The fucking Cowboys are going to win by 20 points. So with the points, What do I have them at? They got them at eleven and a half. What do you have them at twelve? I have them at twelve on Bet DSI. If you have better, okay. if you have a better line, take it. Bet DSI. Um, look, I'll say it again. I hate that we couldn't pass a fucking law in California, and I'm stuck just on Bet DSI, and I can't shop lines because I know there are much better lines everywhere else, and they don't let yeah, you I use mean, all one... lines, and you're you're stuck with what they give you, and it's take it or leave it, and it's awful. So it's 110 to win 100. It's minus 110 with the points. Um, but that's my game. I really, I, I mean, I'm a, I, 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 I'm like sick to my stomach, but I'm like, I'm on the Cowboys bandwagon. Ugh. It's terrible, dude. I know. It's the worst place I could ever imagine myself, but it's where I have to be. I need a win. I'm 0-2. I need a fucking win. I'm not going 0 3 to start the season on my picks. So I'm not on that band. I'm not on that Cowboys bandwagon. I think they're still not the third best week? team in the NFC. I not mean, even against the 12, Cardinals. 12 and a half. I don't know. No, it's um, not 12. I had 11. I can. And a half. I, can I can get. I can okay. get an. Alt, I can get an alt line here. I could get it down but it's, as it's low as 10 and a half. 14 or more for sure. For sure, lock it. Well, I could do if you really believe that. I could do uh, an alt line minus thirteen and a half and get plus one hundred. Well, we don't have to pay the ten dollar vig. I love that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a fourteen point game at least, at least, and they're gonna lap them. Is there a bet for that? They double them up. Whatever <laughs> they get, they're gonna double them up. Um, hundred percent. Just based on, I mean, I've watched. Both of those teams play a full game. I watched the Cowboys beat the fuck out of the goddamn Giants. And I watched the Cardinals implode against the Giants. The if the if I mean if McCarthy doesn't have a lobotomy and can coach half as well as he did last week, they're gonna fucking they're gonna score forty five points. And the defense might not even give up one. So it, I just wonder how relieved McCarthy was not have to face Rogers. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't think you about know? that. I mean, that I was like a big. That. that would have been a. There's a lot of games this year that had storylines that you know we wouldn't get to see. Yeah, did he go? Back, he's going back to the Packers too, right? Or the Jets play oh, the Packers? Yeah. No, no, not this year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, that was a good one. You know, I mean, like the Jets Giants tickets have gone down like exponentially in price. So I look at that like the stock market. Um, yeah. So uh, it's uh, that's I just think that I'm I'm on, you know, the Cowboys bandwagon for right now. I hope to get off. I hope it explodes. I just hope I'm not on it when it does. So not this week. What do you guys got? Go ahead, I know what I got. What do you got? I'm taking the Bills again. I had minus six and a half. <laughs> oh over my Washington. God. Here we go. Okay. Wearing the hat and wearing the shirt. Yeah. They're going to win by seven. Yeah, they should. I'm sorry. The commander, the commanders suck. And the Bills, this is the point of the season where they get their shit together before they lose it in the playoffs. Bills will go 10 and three over the next 14 weeks. I, ooh, okay. 
You got six and a half? Yeah. And do you have less? In Washington. Less. I just yeah, worry. It's, Coast, it's all the same shit. It doesn't matter to Josh. Yeah. I worry about the, the, the running game. That's my only thing. But I believe. Yeah, I'll stop Brian Robinson. I mean, Brees Hall was it. That was an anomaly. Brees Hall is very, very, very good. Brees Hall broke one big run and was not crazy after. It wasn't like they were giving up four or five huge chunk runs. It was it was one big run, which they were able to catch him at the end. Last week, I mean, Josh Jacobs, all pro running back, minus two yards. That should make you feel better. That's not nothing. Okay. Right. Okay, Rogue. <laughs> um, don't yell at me. Hey. It's fine. Rogue, um, I got to make my pick. What is it, Brandon? What is your pick? I mean, I, I I can't I can't get off Baltimore. Anthony Richardson is is in concussion protocol. Uh, yeah. Is Gardner Minshew gonna come into ball, Baltimore and, and bring that Minshew mania magic with his jean shorts? I I don't think so. I think Baltimore should win this game fairly easily. And uh, right now, I'm getting. Uh, where are you? I'm getting seven and a half points. So I'd probably buy that down to seven and let them win by a touchdown. Okay. So you would buy all right, yeah. I'd buy that. I don't want to I don't want to be on the hook. Yep. All right. I like that too. I I could see Baltimore getting a, a couple of score lead and then, you know, going into the prevent defense and Minshew getting like a garbage time touchdown and keeping it within seven. Like that's probably how the game will play out. But Jackson looked better this week. Uh, Mark Andrews is back. You know, J.K. Dobbins being out sucks, but Hill and 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 Edwards looked pretty solid, and and Flowers has looked fun, like he's fun to watch. So, and we know the defense is solid. So they 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 beat Cincinnati yeah. in Cincinnati, and now they host a a bad team. Um, do we want to run a parlay on this, or do we want to keep them three separate bets? Parlay. Can we always parlay, parlay it up? We okay. we used to, but then I read that book that said it was a dumb thing to do. But yeah, we've been doing dumb things for for that's our that's our mo. Yeah. So, uh, um. I mean, also, can we see. mention? I mean, I... Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say Deion Sanders in Colorado. Did you watch that game? That I game was, was lucky enough to insane. And did you see? I was lucky uh... enough to be on the West Coast in Tacoma. Thank you very much to everyone who came to the shows at the Com- Tacoma Comedy Club this past weekend. They were awesome. But, yeah, after my second show on Saturday, the game was still going on. So I watched the second overtime in the dressing room, green room. It was fucking awesome. I mean, look, the hit on Hunter was horrible. You know, a tough hit to watch and, and to have happen. But they picked it back up and they continued on. Uh, they didn't look great. But they did enough to win. And, you know, I think that this week's going to be a real tough challenge. This is the week you get to see uh, against but, Oregon. But did you guys see on the, the news that uh, Warren Sapp is going to join the coaching staff next season? At uh, Colorado? Mm-hmm. For real? Why next season? Why not right now? Uh, I don't know why not right now, but uh, next season he's going to be a part of that uh, organization. So really? Dion, Dion's building, and I'm sure the transfer portal is going to be really interesting, and that's going to be where every young kid wants to play that that thinks they're going to go to the NFL. Why not? I mean, the exposure that these kids are getting. Yeah, absolutely. It's unbelievable. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, it was awesome. And uh, But I think this week it's, it's – uh, I think they're a big dog. I I think that they cover and they keep it a, a close game, but I don't know if they pull it out in Oregon. This is their probably their biggest challenge so far. More than I mean, TCU? TCU was no joke. Yeah, TCU was no joke. I mean, but they got kind of caught on their heels. They had to go against a team that they'd never seen assembled before, play football, you know, like as a as a unit. Oregon's had as a good team and they got a good quarterback, just as good as, you know, Shakur Sanders, I think. And you know, they they also have had two weeks to, to look at this and go, you know, this is what we can do against them. This is what we can do there. And honestly, with Hunter not being in, 
that's a big, you know, that's a big loss. Besides probably Sanders going out, the quarterback, Hunter's probably the most valuable player on the team. Mm-hmm. He's a two-way player. He's their best defender, arguably, and one of their best offensive players as well. So it is a, it, you know, they do have to account for that. So I, I think this is a, you know, I don't think they get their doors blown off, but I think that they lose this week. So, well, that's what everyone's we'll been saying every week. So, I mean, yeah, until I see it, not, I thought they would, would beat Colorado State, and honestly, I thought they would do it easier than they did. So that kind of is what I'm going on, and the fact that they got to go on the road, and then they got to play UCL USC the next week, the week after. One of those two games, they're going to lose. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was on the road against Oregon. Um, yeah. What else? So we, we're going to do a parlay? What do we win if we get yeah, all three? I'm, set, I'm setting it up right now. Okay. So we have uh, – feel free to fade this, anyone who's listening. <laughs> Do the exact opposite. Although I, I don't see the bills. What the oh, fuck? Why does it do this? Okay, here we go. What is going on? You're terrible at this. I know. I, I really am. But they changed. Uh, and the, Bet DSI changed their their format. Oh, again. vamp! Like there's no if you guys are uh... sports book anymore. If anyone is uh, around Salt Lake City this weekend, I'll be at Wise Guys, one of my favorite comedy clubs. Friday and Saturday, two shows each night, 7 and 9.30. Come on down. Tickets at steverenzizi.com. The weekend after, next weekend, uh, I'm in Vegas at Skank Fest. The weekend after that, in D.C. at the Comedy Loft. Um, and then uh, I got Philly coming up. I got uh, Atlanta, not Atlanta, um, Addison. Chicago, all at steveranazizi.com. Check out the website for tickets. You guys have any other uh, anything you want to plug while Brenton's doing his fucking calculations here? Um, I think it's American Legion on Saturday and then set up LA next week. Hell yeah. Thursday. So. Dude, you, and by the way, you look shredded in your Instagram post recently. Yeah, I'm trying to be in the Expendables 5. It's coming. You're, you're you're getting there, dude. I am. <laughs> it's Steve. I've been insane. After the right podcast now. is over, I'm going to run seven miles. Whoa, seven yeah. miles! Is that a daily thing well, for you? No, I, I hiked up to Lake Hollywood, and then I do that three and a half mile around, yeah. and that's like a that sprint. Too. And then I oh, sprint walk that I as fast as I can. I try to do it all in under twenty four minutes. Damn. Yeah. Oh shit, dude! All right, is it warm out there? Is it hot, or is it perfect? Like kind of perfect warm? today. This is September yeah. is my favorite. September, October, as a sports fan, you know, when you're a kid, you hate it because school starts and all yep. that shit. But as an adult, like Sunday is my favorite day. It's all football. Yep. As a kid, I hated Sundays. Yep, it's all it's been a awesome. 180. It's okay. uh, it's beautiful here too. So we've had a great, like, nice sixty degrees, cool, getting that. that that fall chill in the air. Brenton, Jesus Christ. I got it. <laughs> I got to take my it. fucking kids out I got school. it. I got, got it. it. Okay, so the Cowboys minus 13 and a half. The Bills minus seven. The Ravens minus seven. 50 bucks is going to win us $316.67. Uh, let's fucking go. Come on. Huh? Uh, and then uh, go watch uh, Joe Bartnick's special on all things comedy. Go watch Todd Berry's special on all things comedy on the YouTube page. And the trailer for... Bill Burr's directorial debut, Old Dad's Drop, today, October 20th. I saw that. I'm not in the union. I can promote it. Uh, I'm not a scab. This was a uh, – I'm, I'm a guy just saying that I'm a big fan of Bill's, and there's a movie coming out that he wrote, starred in, and directed. I'm a big fan of Bill's, and I know how that shit works. And so, yeah, there's a movie, and go see it. I don't want to get in trouble, even though um, you shouldn't say well. anything. But I, yeah. uh, I'm no Bill Maher. I'm no Drew Barrymore. I have not worked in the union. They do not book me for things, so I can say and do whatever I want. I haven't written anything in five years, so you can't get me for anything. So how about that? <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. Um, anything else? We're good. We're good. Awesome. Uh, that's the podcast for this week. Thank you very much for listening. 
and uh, and rate, subscribe, tell somebody else. Let's build this fucker up a little bit day by day, bet by bet, dollar by dollar that we are winning you consistently every single week, whether you bet with us or against us. One of us is right. One of us is always wrong. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. Talk to you later. Go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. Back, back. Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy.